think they're getting better and better. It's good to see everyone today. Um, I'm Greg Fritz, and I'm actually on the board of this church, but uh, uh, more than that, I'm a friend of this church and your pastor, and I just love what God's doing here. I, I trust them completely. It's uh, an honor to be to serve on your board and to see kind of the inner workings of your church, and you're in great hands here. Your leadership cares about you. They're true pastors. And, uh, you know, we've gone through this. I, I hesitate to even mention the pandemic. I don't want to give it any more press. It's gotten plenty of press, if you know what I mean. Uh, but um, I, w- I was able to watch your church and the, the videos. How many of you liked the videos they did? That was a, They really did a great job. So we would wait, wait each week to see the new video they produced and uh, heard all about your youth center. I'm going to go tour that today and see, um, and Brandon's out there now doing the youth service. So it'll be great to see that and, and uh, just to be here with you. I, I haven't been out. I've only been out three times in the last six months. And so this is the third. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like freeze up or maybe preach for three hours. It's just, I haven't been around a, a live audience in so long, but I have been doing my TV program and thank God for our partners and your church, I don't know if you know this, but your church is a partner with, with us and they have really, you've helped us during this time to uh, pay all of our TV bills and expand. We've gone on another uh, actual broadcast TV station that's nationwide, it's on direct TV. And so we're starting to see response from that. But boy, people need the good news. Can you say amen? And that's the name of my program. But it, it's so important nowadays. We get so much bad news. And a little bit of that will do you for a while. But uh, we need to really increase our intake of good news. And, you know, God showed me this before I started the program. When I wrote my first book, he said, you know, there's plenty of good news in the world. It just doesn't get as much coverage. And did you know that there is good news? You might say, well, what do we have to be thankful for? Well, first of all, God's on the throne. That's a good one. Second of all, Jesus is Lord. Thirdly, the Bible is true. And fourth, you're going to heaven. I mean, how can you lose? You've got everything that matters going for you, and that's really good news. And so, you know, it's just a matter of our focus. I, I just don't want to get so caught up into the, in the, the news of the day that I forget to be happy. And boy, if you want to be happy nowadays, you have to determine to be happy. You're not just going to get up and, and coast your way into happiness. It's time to determine to be happy. You know, we only have one life to live. And I can't help it that we live in 2020. Can you? Here we are. And the world's going to hell in a handbasket and all the other things you see going on. I can't help that. All I can do is live my life. And I refuse to let a pandemic steal my joy. I refuse to let the news media determine how I'm going to feel about my life from day to day. I refuse to let current events dictate my emotions. And you just have to be a little more determined nowadays to be happy. But you know, it takes more faith to laugh than it does to cry. I'd rather just laugh. I'd rather be happy. How many of you think you could just be happy and just, you know, who knew that in 2020, just being happy would give the devil a black eye? Just, just being happy makes a statement because everybody's so intense. Have you, you noticed that or is it not that way? Everybody's just so polarized and everybody's mad. I don't care which side you agree with. They're mad and they want you to be mad. And I'm just not going to be mad. We have good tidings of great joy to all people. Let, Let me repeat that. I don't know if you got that. You hadn't heard that lately. We have good tidings of great joy to the people we agree with. No, to all people. I don't care who they are. We have good tidings of great joy for all people. I refuse to be pigeonholed and separated and divided. I want to be part of the body of Christ. Let's show the world how to love one another. Let's show the world that life is bigger than than political parties and elections. Let's just rise up and be the body of Christ and show people that, you know what, when God's on your side, you can be happy, you can be victorious, you can live in any age and in any day and not hate people. Not hate people. I don't hate anybody. 
I love people. How about you? You know, I prayed this morning and God's not mad. I, I'm, I'm glad to tell you. He's still not mad. He's happy. He, he loves everybody and what he did, it's still in force for whosoever believes. Amen. 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 Well, that's your encouragement part of it for this morning. I've got a message for you, but man, it's just been so long and I felt like I should just thank you so much because you guys have given extra during this time and I needed it. I used to 80% of our income came through, through traveling to churches and only going to three churches in the last six months. That would have really pretty much done us in. I'd be on the street, you know, with a sign saying we'll preach for food or something, you know. (laughs) I, I don't know how I would have made it, but uh, thank God our, our audience and people like you, our partners and donors, have stepped up and really helped us. And I, I don't, you know, I, I mean, everybody, I believe everybody feels like they're essential, you know, but, um, but how much more do we need good gospel ministries in days like this? And I'm glad I didn't have to quit the ministry and go get a job. I'm glad I could still preach. And in fact, we got more material than we've ever had. I've just completed my 400th television episode and I've got a hundred more. I have a hundred more I want to do right now. That's how much studying and feeding I've done. And Boy, it is, it is really time for the message to get out. And I've got this for you. Um, I have a new series called God Likes Faith. And I've been studying faith. I'm going to give you sort of an introduction today. But I'd like for you to follow up on it if you're interested in that. There has never been a day in our lifetime where we need to walk by faith more than today. You need to not get your your input or your you know your assurances from the world around you from in you know the circumstances we need to walk by faith and not by sight it's one of the only ways that you can live and be happy in times like this because your happiness your joy is not determined by current events or politics the weather the economy our Joy comes from our faith in God. That's what walking by faith is all about. And uh, we need to revisit these things. You know, Tina, I, I went and studied all the things we grew up on 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and I began to restudy them and get a hold of them. And I'll tell you, the message of faith is so important. And we got a whole generation of people now that have never been introduced to the message of faith. And it's just, uh, it's time to, to, to revisit those truths. I believe you're going to like this. But let me just say this. I've, so I've got this new series. This is probably the best cover we've ever done. I know you can't see it, but there's a little boy on here with a Bible on his lap, laughing his head off. And, and it's called God Likes Faith. And I'll tell you what, Uh, You may not really care for faith. You know, when we deal with one another in life, we don't really want to deal with each other by faith. You know what I'm saying? If if you pay somebody for something, you want them to show up. You don't want them to show up by faith. And so uh, we we deal with sight and sound in, in in this world. But when it comes to God... Everything that we do when we interact with God is, is based on faith. God likes faith. It makes him happy. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So uh, this is a four-message series. The number one is why faith. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. And then number two, you can do this. Faith is something you can do. Number three, building a storm-proof life. And these are not literal storms, although... <laughs> Man, I've, we prayed for you guys. I know you've been through it, and uh, our hearts are with you. Our prayers are with you. But building a storm-proof life really is symbolic. Uh, we're in a season of storms. How many of you know that? We have, we have entered into a season in our nation of storms, and they're on every hand. And you can storm-proof your life so that when the rains come and the winds come, the wise man's house stood I want to be that man. How about you? And then finally, the same, we have the same spirit of faith, and that's encouraging. These are CDs. How many of you, if you had a choice to listen to an audio series, you would choose CDs? Now, this isn't a trick question. You have a CD player? Okay, all right. I I don't even know where I am anymore. How many of you would like cassette tapes? You would do cassette tapes in your cassette player. All right. CDs? Is that the only one? 
Come, come get this. I'm giving this to you. So you have a CD player. You're going to like this. They're going to be so jealous of you. You're going to say, I got that new series and it was so good. And y'all can't listen to it because you don't have a CD player. Now, let me ask you this. We have just gotten these ready. This fancy thing is a USB drive. If you don't know what that is, ask your grandkids. They'll tell you. Uh, but it's a USB drive. It's in the form of a card. It's got my logo on it. And you can plug this in <laughs> to a USB port. Have I lost anybody yet? And, and, and we've been experimenting with these because I wanted to make them available. This is the, the USB version of the new series, God Likes Faith. And you can plug this into your car and it will play on your, if you have a USB port. Is that not the coolest thing? You can plug it into your smart TV and it will play on your smart TV. You can plug it into your computer and put it on your devices. So uh, how many of you, if you had the choice and you were going to listen to a God Likes Faith, a new series that will encourage you to no end, you would choose to have it in a USB form. How many of you wouldn't listen to it no matter what form... It was on no matter what. You're not going to listen to anything except bad news. Shame on you. I'm trying to help you here. Let's get some good news. You would? Do you have a USB port in your car? You know, what happened to me was um, I produce CDs, you know, and, and we've sold CDs for since cassettes went out of style. If you don't know what a cassette is, Google it. Uh, they're in the Smithsonian. Um, but, but uh, so I bought this car a few years ago and I, and I was driving home in it and I realized I got halfway home that it didn't have a CD player. And then I thought, well, I don't care. I don't even listen to CDs. And then a few more miles down the road, I realized you sell CDs. You better do something. And so uh, here we've got these. In fact, what we're doing is putting our programs, I'll do 15 or 20 programs on a series and we're packing those on these and in audio and video and you can listen to them or watch them on your TV, your device, your computer, or listen to them in your car. It's been a, it's been a great uh, time of expansion for us. Uh, hopefully, everyone's not like you guys, and they'll be excited about USB uh, drives. They're very simple, and they're permanent. So I'm going to give this to Tina. All right. I want to talk about this subject, God likes faith. And I want you to go to Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews eleven six, And we're just going to introduce this. And I, I've had a lot of fun with this because it's just not so overwhelming. It's not so intense. It's just fun and happy. God is a happy God. He's not wringing his hands. He's not worried. He's not on edge. He's not looking at the news every night and gasping and wondering, what are we going to do next? God's not changed. And when we connect with him, we don't change. When we re react to his word and stand on his word, then we become more like him. And we're just steadfast and immovable, even in trying times. In fact, in fact, he told Timothy in the last days, there will be perilous times. That word means stressful, agitating, perturbing. How many of you have been perturbed lately with the things going on? You know, if they'd just let me run the world, it would be a much better place. But you know, we only have so much influence, and, uh, we, but, but we still have to live our lives in this world, and uh, we've got to learn, you know, how to get along, how to, how to go forward. So Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. That is God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God must like faith if if you have to walk by faith to please God. And he does like faith. God enjoys faith more than you would. As I said, if you're an employer, you don't want your employee to show up by faith. If you're an employee, you don't want your employer to pay you by faith. You want the actual check. 
And so when we deal in, in, in real world situations, we use sight and sound and evidence and proof. But when you shift over into the things of God and the kingdom of God, you're talking to a God you cannot see. You cannot touch him. You can't hear him. And yet you have to base your, your future, bet your whole life, your eternity on him. And so everything that we do when we interact with God is built on, based on faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. By grace are you saved through faith and not, that not of yourself. We fight the good fight of faith. We're supposed to go from faith to faith, from victory to victory. In fact, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is something that we really need to have a grasp on because, you know, you, you, you're not going to please God without it. And... Uh, it's just that important. So I'm going to give you a few points here. If you, if you like to, to take notes, this is point number one. God likes faith because God likes to give, and it takes faith for you to receive from God. He likes to give, and faith is the way he's chosen to do it. Did you know that you couldn't even be saved? You couldn't receive the gift of salvation without faith. You have to believe the gospel, believe the truth, and you have to take that step of faith that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead and I confess him now as Lord and Savior of my life. That is a faith transaction. And so God likes faith because he wants to give and for you to receive from an invisible God, you've got to do it by faith. Now, listen, let me say this up front. God uses faith to get things to you, not take things away from you. God is using this process of faith to bless you, to bless your socks off. In fact, let me tell you how important it is for God to give things to you. I want to read a few scriptures that you're familiar with. John 14, 13, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, in my name, I will do it. In John 15, 16, he said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. And then John 16, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Can you see how faith is important? But God says this over and over again, ask me for what you want. Ask me, what, what do you want? Ask me, really, I mean really, ask me. He said it over and over and over and I didn't read them all, but he's very interested in getting things to us. Think about this, and I'm going to give you this example, and I think you can, you can kind of translate it into your own experience. But let's, let's say that, that, that you are a very wealthy person. I know we're dreaming now, aren't we? But let's just say that we're millionaires, billionaires. We have all this wealth, and we decide to do something nice for our friends and family, and we decide, you know what, I'm going to have a feast. I'm going to prepare a feast and have an all-you-can-eat buffet, and I'm going to invite all my friendly family and friends over to enjoy this feast. And if you had plenty of money, and you decided that this is what you're going to do, and you spent months getting food together and preparing all the, you know, every, every detail of this, of this feast... And then you sent the invitations out and then they all came from everywhere. And these are your, your friends and your family, people that you want to bless. You've, you've prepared all the food. Everything is ready now. And there's, there's, you know, salads and there's meats and vegetables and desserts and drinks and everything that you would have at a, at a feast, at a, great, at a great feast is ready now. And your friends and family showed up and they all, all they did was make excuses and say, you know what, I'll just have water. Wouldn't you be disappointed? I mean, if you went to all that trouble and all they wanted was a glass of water, you're like, wait a minute, I, I made this for you. I prepared this for you. I paid for it. Oh, we don't want to be an imposition. No, I, it was my idea. Did you know you were God's idea? You're not an imposition on God. He made you. You didn't ask to be born. God formed you and, and created you. He came up with the idea to have you. And he's prepared 
all his wealth for you to enjoy. And one by one, they begin to make excuses. Let me give you these different um, categories. One, one group of people says, well, you know, I just don't deserve it. Well, what does that have to do with it? You don't deserve Of course you don't deserve it. But when did that determine whether you got invited to the feast or not? Your friends and family. God chose you. He's invited you. You're part of this. Don't go around feeling inferior because you think you don't deserve it. It's not based on what you deserve. And then another group says, well, I don't need that much food. All I need is bread and water. I just don't need to eat like that. Well, what does that have to do with it? You're not paying for it. Just go ahead and enjoy what God has for you. Get rid of that poverty mentality that all I want is just enough to survive. I mean, nobody should eat delicacies like that. It's just not right. No, it, it is right. It, it, the rich man provided it. He prepared it. He's gone out and gotten it. He planned this. You're ruining your own party. Then another group of people says, well, I just don't believe it. It's too good to be true. I can't partake of that. Well, that's just doubt and unbelief. You need to get over that. How many of you believe if somebody wanted to provide an all-you-could-eat feast that you could go through the line and help yourself? Do you believe that you could take that step of faith and say, all right, I'm going to do this? Instead of doubting. And God has to deal with all of this opposition just to get people to be blessed. Then there's another group of people that, that are self-reliant. And their attitude is, I'll get my own food. I'll kill my own game and I'll go to the grocery store and I'll buy my own food. I don't need your food. Well, it wasn't a question of that. God wants to do something good for you. Can you not just receive it? Well, no, not if I didn't pay for it. Not if I didn't produce it. Nope, I'm not going to take somebody else's. Well, you're, you, that's just not faith. That's not how the kingdom works. And then there's another group and they're the hardest of all. Religious works. Their attitude is, I'll pay you back. I'm not going to eat for nothing. I will pay you back with penance and grief and condemnation, and I'll beat myself up until I have suffered long enough to, to pay you back for all this food that you've done for me. You know what? Leave your works. Leave your money. Leave your sense of, of, of uh, deserving or undeserving. Leave all that behind. Jesus said to, to operate in the kingdom of God, you have to come as a little child. Children don't have a problem eating at the all-you-can-eat buffet, do they? They don't have all this baggage that they're carrying around thinking, I can't, no, it's just not right. No, they just jump in at one end or the other, and you have to try to, you know, guide them, get your vegetables and whatnot. No, we need to be like children and jump right in. The Father has provided us richly all things to enjoy. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We are only going to receive from God as much as we believe for. So let's get with the program. Stop cheating yourself. Stop living in the land of, of, of religion and self-reliance and pride and poverty mentality. Let's get over that and let's believe God that if God wants to bless somebody, he can just bless me. If God wants to make an example out of someone, you can go ahead and use me. I won't put up any, any obstacles. If God wants to bless me, I'm going to be blessed. How about you? God likes faith because he likes to give us things. All right, did you get that one? All right. Number two, God likes faith because he is a faith God. Did you know he operates by faith? He's not saying, okay, you guys got to operate by faith. I'm God, I don't have to. He operated by faith and, and I can prove it. In Hebrews 11:3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Psalm 33, 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. God speaks the word of faith or he spoke the word of faith to create the world and he wants us to follow his example. He said, let there be light. He began to speak his faith and create the universe and he wants us to follow and create our own world and begin to confess his word over our lives. Are you with me? And now, now, now get this. He 
went out into the darkness when there was no light whatsoever and said, let there be light. He expects us then to speak over our own lives when there's nothing but sin and destruction and defeat and guilt and say, Jesus is Lord. God is my father. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. By his stripes I was healed. He wants us to begin to speak over our lives, the way he spoke over the darkness, the way he spoke the universe into existence. He's a faith God. He believes in the, in, the, in, the, in the steps of faith, and he's given us the capacity to follow him in the life of faith. Don't you like that? Let's, let's get with the program. You know, it's so easy to argue and, and have, you know, opposition to the things that God does, but it's so much better just to go with the flow. Let's go with his plan. If he wants us, you know, like I said, faith doesn't mean that much to me. I don't want Bill to show up by faith when he's supposed to pick me up at the airport. I want him to be there in the flesh, you know, actually there with his truck. And so that's what we want as humans. It doesn't mean that much to us. But, but just knowing that it means so much to God, that ought to make all the difference. If God likes faith, you know what? I can do faith. Let's just do faith. And boy, he loves it. God moves at the point of your faith. He will do what you believe him to do. In many cases, he won't do anything more. All right, number three, God likes faith because it's fair think about this. Faith is fair. See, how could it be fair? Anybody can do it. Anybody can choose to believe. Isn't that great? It's not just for rich people or poor people or educated people or uneducated people. The Bible says that it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. Think about all the unsaved in the world of which we were part And God says, how am I going to save these people? Am I only going to save those that can pay me? Am I only going to save those that can earn it? Am I only going to save those that are really intelligent? Am I only going to save those who have lots of wisdom? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, it says that that through the wisdom of God, he determined that the world through wisdom would not know God. I'm glad that wisdom is not the road to God because then only the wise would find God. He decided that through the foolishness of preaching, he would save those who believe. What's powerful about that is anybody can do this. Isn't that great? So faith puts God within everyone's reach. Anybody can choose to believe God, including you. In fact, you've already done it. Say, well, I just don't know if I can do it. You've already have. If you believe there's a God in heaven, how many of you believe that? You're already doing this. In fact, the Bible calls you believers. Why? Because that's what we do. We believe things. How many of you believe that Jesus lived on the earth 2,000 years ago? Did you see him? Have you seen his footsteps? Have you seen any evidence physically that he existed? How many of you believe he died on a cross? Have you ever seen the cross? You ever visited it? Is there a piece of the cross in a museum that you can prove and point to and say it did exist? No, there's nothing. And yet we believe that. And we believe that he died for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. Were you there at the resurrection? Did you see the empty tomb? No. And yet you believe that. How many of you believe that beyond the shadow of a doubt? Aren't you glad that God likes faith and God has put himself within everyone's reach by faith? Because we can do this. There's a lot of things I can't do, but I can believe. You know, we had the, the, the uh, I don't know why I was thinking about this, but when I was a kid, they had the presidential act of athleticism or something, and you were supposed to be able to do all these physical feats. And one of them was you were supposed to be able to jump six feet. And that one just killed me. I just couldn't do it. I jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped. And I'd measure it and think, surely that's six feet, surely. And that was always short. I finally just gave up on it. 
thought I'd go into some other field because I just couldn't jump that far. And other people could do it. I just couldn't do it. And it was so frustrating. And some people think that about God, that he's just just out of your reach. Now, other people can reach him, but you can't reach him because there's just something about you God don't like. You just tick him off. And you know there's plenty of things you've done to tick him off. And you know that he's just really upset with you. And he just he might tolerate you, might let you into heaven, but he's just not going to be real excited about it. That's just wrong. We, God is not beyond our reach. He's not out there where we can just barely get to him and hang on until we maybe make it to heaven. He has put himself within everyone's reach by faith. And you can do this. Through the foolishness of preaching, you can choose to believe that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, that he died for your sins. You can confess him with your mouth and by faith you can be saved and you can be a child of God. And by faith then you can possess all the blessings that are that, that a child, a son and daughter of God actually enjoy. We are heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus and we can possess all of these things by faith. In fact, it's the things that you've believed for in the kingdom that you've received. Nothing more, nothing less. Faith makes it fair Young people can believe on Jesus. Old people can believe on Jesus. That's just the way God wanted it. He didn't want just the wise, just the rich, just the intelligent, or just the unintelligent. He wanted everybody to have access to him, and we do it by faith. Isn't that a privilege and an honor to be able to believe God. All right, let me give you another. You want another one? I could add this. God has no favorites. He has no favorite children. There's not the in and you know if you if you have any kind of a group that gets together in the world, you're going to figure out who the haves and the have-nots, the popular, the unpopular, the in, the out. We always have ways of of dividing ourselves into categories, but in God's kingdom, there are no favorites. He loves everybody the same. He doesn't have any grandkids. Everybody's first generation Christian. God is your father. You are his child. He loves you as a child and has given you the child's right of inheritance, the firstborn. All that Jesus has and all that he is is in us. We have access to all these things by faith. I like faith. How about you? God likes faith because he wants to give us things we could never earn. Boy, I want you to get that one. Because this opens the windows of heaven to your life. You see, God is wealthy. In fact, Romans 4.16, I'll read this and then I'll comment. Romans 4.16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. It is of faith that it might be by grace. What he's saying is all the blessings of God that he has, he's rich, he's wealthy, he's beyond measure rich. And he wanted to share these things with us. And he had to devise a way to do that. So if you were going to go down the list, you'd say, now, should we just give everybody what they can earn or what they deserve? How many of you could say, no, no, that's not a good way to do that. Should we give everybody what they can eventually earn and pay back, put them in debt, and then they can just work it out throughout eternity? That wasn't going to be good enough for God. He devised this method that it might be according to faith, based on grace. See, what does that mean? Grace says, everything I have is available to every person. Everybody can have it all. Isn't that neat? No, no limits. God has wealth unlimited. So he doesn't have to put a, a, a you know, he doesn't have to spread it around evenly because he's going to run out. He's got plenty for everybody. So by grace, Jesus just paid for it all and made it all ours. 
starting with salvation and including every promise in the Bible. All the promises of God in him are what? Yes, and in him, amen. So all of his blessings are available to anybody and everybody. But if, that, if it stopped right there, then everybody would just get everything automatically. How many of you know it doesn't work that way? So if you don't pay for it, if it's already paid for, if God's already made it available to everybody and he's got no favorites, there's no little or big, there's nobody that's inside, nobody that's outside, you can't politic in the kingdom of God, you can't bribe God, you can't pay God off, he doesn't work that way, everything's available to everybody. How do we decide who gets what? But if you're an angel and you're distributing these blessings to, the, to humanity, how would you decide who gets what? And it's very simple. God said, give every person as much of my grace as they believe for. That's the regulator. That determines who gets what. No favoritism, but every person in the kingdom of God gets as much grace as they believe for. That's why... When the, the gentleman came to Jesus with his son with a deaf and dumb spirit, and he said, if you can do anything, help us, have compassion on us, deliver this boy, do something. And Jesus said, uh, if you can believe, all things are possible. He said, there's, a, there's one obstacle here. And it's not my ability or my willingness or it's not the fact that the gift's not available or paid for. The only limitation here today is your faith. If you can believe it, I can do it. And you know that's the case today. God has made all of his grace available to whoever believes. And you can see this. I mean, you know this. You didn't get saved. How many of you are saved? Well, maybe I shouldn't ask. Yeah, how many of you are saved? You're saved. You, Jesus is Lord. You didn't get saved because God got tired of you messing up, and he just decided, you know what? I'm just going to save them. I just, I'm just going to save them because I can't take this anymore. And, and you were just like walking down the street, and bing, you got saved. Is that how that happened? No. You didn't get saved even though salvation's paid for. Jesus did the work. He included you. But you didn't actually receive that until you believed. Did you know you could have gotten saved two weeks earlier than you did? So, well, didn't God want to save you two weeks earlier? Yes. Could he have saved you two? Yes. Why did he wait two more weeks? Because you didn't believe two weeks earlier. And you know, it goes on and on like this. You believe and you receive salvation. There's also the gift of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have received that gift? And you know what? You can choose to accept that. And if you don't, you won't. And if you do, you will. Because we access the blessings of God by faith. And we can expand our circle of faith. Did you know you can believe God for protection? There's promises in the Bible that promise you protection. Who's that for? Whoever believes it. Did you know there are promises in the Bible that promise us provision? Well, who's that work for? Whoever believes it. Did you know there are promises in the Bible that promise you victory? That promise you that you are an overcomer in life? Well, who's that for? Whoever believes it. Isn't that powerful? What, what God's done is he's put our future in our own hands. He's put his ability, his wealth, his blessings and the ability to receive them in our hands, not his. You can have all you can believe for. You say, well, how do I believe for more? You just get more promises. Did you know you couldn't believe in the gospel until you heard the gospel? How could they believe in whom they've not heard? How could they hear without a preacher? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you need more from him, begin to listen to more and begin to read Greater promises, promises maybe that cover areas of your life that you need help in. It's so important for us as Christians to follow up our Christian experience, our new birth experience with a life of faith where we believe the promises of God. Just like we believe that we're saved, we can believe we're blessed, we're forgiven, we're children, we're heirs, we're victorious. We're provided for. Can you see how important it is to get our signals from God right now? 
Maybe you've lost your job or lost the ability to make a living. You may have lost your sense of purpose. You may have lost your sense of protection. God can provide that for you by faith. It won't come through natural means, but if you'll believe the word of God, you can have assurance, you can have stability, you can have victory in the midst of chaos because faith knows no limitations. Faith is not limited by current events. It's not limited by the news. It's not limited by what the government does. It's not limited by the economy. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory, not just when the economy is good and the dollar is strong. Can you say amen? Once we begin to walk by faith, we are not held hostage to current events, to the the circumstances around us. We leave that behind and we become more stable like God. You say, will this really work? Yes, it's worked for 2,000 years and longer than that. We have example after example in the Bible where men and women chose to walk by faith and not by sight. Not by feeling, not by the news, not by circumstance. They chose to walk by faith. And it'll work now just like it worked then. Can you say amen? Amen. Finally, God likes faith because everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. And I kind of covered that, but let me just say this. Everyone can believe. You can do this. You have the spirit of faith. This isn't just for preachers. It's not just for people in the 70s and 80s. This is something that you can do right now. You can believe God. I can prove it to you. Did you know that there are people in our world, and there may be some people in this room, I'm not looking, who believe that because they've seen a light in the sky that's unidentified, they believe that our earth is inhabited by aliens. And that people are being abducted by aliens. And that aliens are a real thing. And, and uh, I've heard them on the, on the radio at night, late at night. And they talk about these things. And it's, they're all spooky and mystical. And they talk about aliens from other planets. I've even heard scientists say that aliens are out there. We just haven't found them yet. I'm thinking, wow, they're really sure about this? That they're out there and we haven't found them yet. And if you ask the scientists about God, they'll say unequivocally, there is no God. And yet, they believe in aliens. Can you figure that out? I've been to Roswell, New Mexico. Did you know in Roswell, New Mexico, that's like the the, the heart of alien nation. And, And that's where some of these radio programs are done. And they had a museum. I didn't go in. But they had a museum, a UFO museum in Roswell, New Mexico. I saw it. And I wish I'd have gone in. Because you know what? They would put in a UFO museum. Nothing. There is no alien carcass. There's no alien fossil. There's no alien spaceship or space suit. There is no natural evidence that an alien from another planet, other than somebody saw a light in the sky and they didn't know what it was, that's the only evidence they have, and yet they want to believe that there are aliens from other planets, which is fine. You say, well, are you saying there's not? I don't know. I've never seen one. I don't know. But I do know this. If they have the capacity... To believe that with no evidence, surely you and I can take the Bible and say that's God's word written to me. Because I have done this with the Bible and I can tell you this, I don't see how believing in an alien will change your quality of life. How it's going to put you over in school or, or you know, help you with that victorious situation and with that relationship you're struggling with or how it's going to deal with, with condemnation and guilt that you have for past mistakes. But I can tell you this, if you'll believe the Bible, just one verse, just one half of a verse, it'll change your life. If you'll believe the Bible, you can move mountains. If you'll believe the Bible, you can kill giants. If you believe the Bible, life as you know it can radically change. And there is nothing else in this world that you can put faith in and get as much results as with God's word. And if you ever feel weak in faith and feel like maybe you can't do this, as this may be beyond your ability, just remember these weirdos that believe aliens from other planets have inhabited earth and realize if they could believe that, surely I can believe I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If they can believe that, surely I can believe I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God and I'm going to heaven when I die. Surely you can believe those things if they can believe that. Am I right? God likes faith because everybody can do this including you. You have the spirit of faith. One of the things I've learned, and I've, this is an ongoing process. I've been studying this for six months, 
and uh, I've done about 35 programs on it so far, and I've got another 70 to go. It's, it's just, it's so important. But one of the things that you learn is, is in, in the area of faith, is that you don't need more faith. You already have the measure of faith. You've already received the gift of the measure of faith. You've already got faith. And Jesus said, if you had faith, that's a mustard seed. Surely you got that much. How many of you think, you know what? I may not be a faith giant, but I surely have. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's the smallest seed. It's just a speck. How many of you believe you have at least a mustard seed worth of faith? Let me see your hand. I knew it. You're here. You're believers. He said, if you just had a mustard seed worth of faith, you could say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up by the roots and cast into the sea, and it would obey you. Isn't that great? Man, Jesus is just encouraging us to believe his word. Get a hold of whatever part you can start with and begin there. Your faith will grow as you exercise it and as you use it. But don't think, you know, I just wish I had more. I just don't have enough. You've got enough. You can start right where you are. One of the things you can do is tune out the bad news. Quit being uh, affected by that. Don't let anxiety come on you or anger or fear or, or trouble. Uh, be troubled in your soul. You need to tune that out and tune the word of God in. And say, I'm going to listen to the word. I'm going to believe what God said and not what man says. I'm going to take the mustard seed worth of faith I've got and start speaking and believing that God's word's true for me in my life. You don't need more faith and you don't need more power. If you're a Christian, God lives in you. Can't get any more power than that. Amen. We've got everything we need to go live a victorious life. You just need to follow up. You know, I didn't ever say, what happened to my series? Y'all give those back. Where, where did those go? I'm, no, I'm kidding. Uh, normally those are $24 a piece, but today I'm going to uh, make those 20 You know what? I'll just do 15 We can't hardly pay for them for that, but la let's just do 15 each. I would love for you to get those, those messages. There's four 50-minute messages on this subject, and it'll give you something to hold on to and to remind you because sometimes when you hear one message, it kind of gets away from you. But you can take that and uh, take it home and listen to it and... Uh, and feed your faith. And really that's the key, is to feed your faith and starve your doubts. Amen. Feed your faith simply by what you listen to, what you feed on. Feed your faith. And then starve your doubts. Limit the things that, that disturb you. I, I've had to cut the news way back, and it's still, it, it's a weakening force. How many of you can, can agree with that? It's just so intense and it's so negative. There are forces out there that want all of, us, all of us to be discouraged. They want us to be sad. They want us to give up. They want us to be disheartened. And I'm just not going to, I'm not going to play into that hand. I'm going to stand on the word of God and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to laugh a little bit. Amen. Amen. I want to laugh. I want to, I want to look at, at, at the bright side. Amen. Praise God. Well, did you get anything out of that? Yeah. Amen. You know what? Let me say this. We've seen the devil try to shut down the world, shut down the church, put everybody in isolation. And it's not been fun. I haven't enjoyed it. But what we haven't seen yet is God's response. And God always has a response. You know, when Adam sinned, God had a response. And when, when Jesus came, he undid everything that Adam did. He completely defeated the enemy in that regard. We have not yet seen God's response to this pandemic. I believe we're going to see people gather together like never before. I believe we're going to see people come into the kingdom like never before. I believe the devil has overplayed his hand again and that there is a massive movement out there, including us, that are going to say, you are not going to shut us down. You are not going to... You know, destroy, devastate the church. You're not going to get us to sit in isolation for the rest of our lives. We are coming together to worship God, to praise God, and to see the world touched by the power of God. And no pandemic is ever going to stop that. Sorry, it's just not going to work. So, well, it looks like it's worked. It ain't over yet. It is not over yet. And you are 
perfectly positioned as well as me for this last day's end time move of God as God reveals his glory to this generation. I tell you, it's exciting. We are going to see God's response to all this madness, and I'm looking forward to it. How about you? And I know it's not going to be embraced with open arms with everybody, but there are multitudes of people out there that feel like you feel, and they're waiting for a chance to, to, to state it, to make it so, to, to act on it. And uh, I tell you, we're going we're gonna to have our say. The, the Lord's going to respond to this, and people are going to be blessed. Can you believe that? Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen.